It's exciting to be here. I'm a bit nervous. This is more people than we ever get visiting our club during cultural festivals. Yeah, we definitely broke past zero. Are you disappointed we're no longer the school's best kept secret? Ah, uh, now that you mention it, that's a problem. You just realized this now? Keeping secrets is part of our club's identity. We need to stay undercover. Should we use a different club name? Good plan. Just for today, call us the Show Stealing Club. If we can make you laugh, call us the Good Feeling Club. Since there's two of us, call us the Double Dealing Club. I think they get the idea. Actually, the group name we signed up with was Magic Astronomy. That suits us well enough. So there was no problem after all. No matter. Undercover or not, it's time to get down to business. My, I wonder where we should even start. Oh, I know. Hey, Mary. What is it, Renko? Have you had any interesting dreams lately? Oh, it's funny you should ask. I had one last night that I've been meaning to tell you about. Is that so? I was actually wondering if you could help me interpret it. Sure, I'll give it a shot. Thanks a bunch. So, in this dream, I'm sitting by the bank of a sparkling lake. Mm hmm I squint through the fog, and I see something flying toward me. Was it fog, or was it mist? What's the difference? Fog is a low cloud. Mist is caused by temperature inversion over water. Then it was mist, I guess. I see. A misty lake. Anyway, the flying object gets closer, and I can tell it's humanoid. Oh? It's a tiny girl with thick, pointy wings. Doesn't sound very aerodynamic. With a closer look, I see that her wings are made of pure ice. All right, let me stop you there. Huh? It's physically impossible to make functioning wings out of ice. For one, the friction of the flapping would melt them into nothing, unless the temperature of the ice was approaching absolute zero, which... Um, Renko? Yeah? Are you trying to debunk my dream? Isn't that what you asked? I asked you to interpret it, not myth bust it. Gee, Mary, you're so picky. I'm only trying to help. You're not letting me finish, though. I didn't even get to the part where the water of the lake starts to bubble mysteriously, like something is about to surface. Could be a lot of things. An animal? A lost tire? A body? A mermaid pops out. Ah. Uh, you don't have a problem with the mermaid? Why would I have a problem with a mermaid? Who's the one being picky here? Go ahead, on with the story. Well, the mermaid was quite upset that her lake was getting so cold. On second thought, I do have a problem with the mermaid. Wrinkle. Mermaids live in the ocean because the salts in their bodies balance with the outside concentration. I've never heard of a mermaid living in a freshwater lake. Well, there was a mermaid, and she asked the fairy to leave politely. But the fairy got so heated... Heated? I mean, she was still ice. But she got mad and started attacking the poor mermaid. The mermaid retreated back underwater, but the fairy dove right in after her to take her on. Hmm... I know, you're going to say it's impossible because ice won't sink in water, right? No, it's impossible because nobody is dumb enough to try that. <laughs> Franco, this is serious. I'm trying to make sense of the strange world I see. I'm being serious. I'm just telling you, according to the laws of physics, your whole dream is a little bit... fishy. So you don't believe me that I really traveled to this magic place? It's about as likely as us traveling to outer space without a single gallon of rocket fuel. Renko. Hmm? We've literally been to space. Have we? Like, at least twice. I think you're exaggerating. I was attacked by a giant chimera. Not sure I remember that. Do you need to see my scar? Whoa, Mary, not in front of the audience. It was on my arm, Mango. <laughs> Jeez, don't say weird things. <laughs> wait, wait, let me guess. All of this nitpicking, are you just trying to play the straight man here? Mm, maybe a little bit. That's really not how you do it. Says who? I mean, I know I'm not a man. Or straight. Right, but when it comes to our roles... I certainly feel like me being the straight man is much closer to reality. Ha, you're one to talk about reality. For the last time, there is no difference between dream and reality. That's common sense nowadays. But it's my dream to be the straight man. It is? So that makes me the straight man, right? Uh, yes? Wait, no. Huh? Don't confuse me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I can see the gaps in your logic. What were we talking about again? I was saying... Right, right. We were planning a trip to space, weren't we? I don't think that's what we were doing. So you don't want to go with me? Of course I do. Like I said, we've gone before. That's great news, Mary. Sorry for teasing you. But you'll forgive me once you hear the exciting trip I have planned. Really? Check this out. I've already made the itinerary for our next club activity in space. Wow! First, we get to the International Space Station. Uh-huh. And then we... Wait. And once we have our hands on that, we can... Ranko, no, that's dangerous. And finally... It's dangerous, Ranko. And... And also probably illegal. That's never stopped us before. <laughs> Fair enough. So, Mary, what's the first thing you want to do when we get to space? I'd love to try some zero-gravity brewed coffee. I hear it's delicious. Good choice. Save me a sip. 
Oh, I'd also like to meet the moon rabbits. Moon rabbits? You know, the bunny rabbits that live on the moon in Pound Mochi. How do you know those exist? You can just look up there and see them, right? What? What? Uh, how does your mind work? You, you know, know I, I won't, won't know till you let me inside. Miri, please, you can't just recycle content like this. Oops, sorry. Wait, you started it. <laughs> Honestly, give up the straight man act. It's never going to work. Even so, I'm not joking about making this trip a reality. Just looking up at that big, boundless sky right now makes me feel like I can do anything. I know how you feel. It really is a beautiful night tonight. Yeah, the stars are shining so clearly. That's right. You can tell the time by looking at the stars. Renko, what time is it now? Mm, let's see. 9.28 and 53 seconds. My, then we're almost out of time for our skit here. Already? Oh no, that means... Huh? What does it mean? We'll have to do... The curtain call. What's so scary about the curtain call? It's not like a bullet curtain, is it? No, it's not that. Then what? You know, we have to say our names to the audience. And? Your name. That's what's scary. What are you talking about? My name is perfectly normal. Your name is not normal in any reality. Don't be silly. I'll teach it to you, okay? You will? A one-on-one -on -one lesson. You can do anything, right? Right. I believe in you. All right. I'm ready. Here, repeat after me. Mighty bitty hun. Muddy buddy? Mighty bitty. Mirably? Mighty bitty. My. My. B. D. Betty. Betty. Mighty bitty. Maribel. What? <laughs> what is that? That's the worst try so far. Seriously. All right, whatever. Let's stick with Mary. Why should I have to change my name? It's just a few simple syllables. I'm sure the audience isn't as dense Three, as... Three, two, one. This has been Renko and... <sighs> Mary. Also known as... Magic, Magic Astronomy. Astronomy. Thank you very much.